This is the DeFi download at Permissionless 2022, brought to you by Bancor. I'm joined by researcher from the Ethereum Foundation, Justin Drake. Justin, good to finally meet in person. How are you doing? Good, good. Good? Yeah. Uh, so we're approaching the triple happening. Can you kind of break that down for us? Like, what exactly does that mean for Ethereum? Like, why are we calling it the triple happening? Right. So you're probably familiar with the happenings in Bitcoin. Every four years, the issuance halves. Um, and what we're going to have at the merge when we remove proof of work is we're also going to remove the proof of work issuance. Okay. Now, right now, the proof of work issuance is on the order of 13,500 ETH. Um, and we're going to replace that with the proof of stake issuance, which is 1,500 ETH. And so roughly speaking, the net issuance is going to go down by a factor of eight, which corresponds to three halvenings, two times two times two, eight, uh, hence the name triple halvening. Um, and one of the kind of interesting consequences is that the supply of ETH is going to peak at the merge and then start going down. And the reason is that to counterbalance some of the issuance, we also have a burn mechanism in Ethereum, as you're familiar with EIP-1559. And so it turns out that the daily burn is on the order of 5,000 ETH, which is several times larger than the proof of stake issuance. And so on net, the supply is going to go down. And over decades, it's going to find a new equilibrium, um, you know, maybe around 60 million ETH, something like that. So you, you coined the phrase ultrasound money, which we probably should talk about that a moment. But when, when you go to the website, ultrasound.money, there's like a little switch you can flip to simulate the merge. And so that's what we're doing, right? You're sort of just letting us know that given the amount of ether being burned, this is what the inflation or deflation rate in some days would, would actually be. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's been fascinating to me, like how EIP-1559 has become really well understood. Like I always thought of it as being fairly complex and now it's become a bit of a meme almost. So I guess, can you help define what is ultrasound money? Like, why did you start calling ETH ultrasound money? Like what exactly does it mean? Right, so we have sound money, right? Which initially started with gold. And the idea of sound money is that it can't be debased, easily at least. It takes a lot of effort to dig up the gold. Um, and the reason why uh, sound money is called sound money is because uh, it's a reference to gold, because when you take two gold coins and you kind of tap them together, it makes this ding, which is characteristic of, of gold. Um, and Bitcoin, took the, the concept, the meme, and basically copy pasted it with digital gold. So that's why we have, you know, the, the cap supply, just like there's a finite amount of gold on the earth, there's a finite amount of, of Bitcoin on earth. Um, but um, in a way, Ethereum is doing something that's never been done before. It's not copy pasting an existing meme, it's kind of innovating on the, at the meme layer, as it were, um, with this uh, new shape of the supply. Um, and basically, the, the, what started as a, as, a, as a joke has now become a meme. The joke being, if cap supply is sound money, then decreasing supply must be ultra sound money. I've actually never gotten the origin of that myself. That, that, <laughs> that, these aren't like planted questions. That, that's me candidly wondering what exactly that means. And now a bunch of people on Twitter are wearing the so-called bat signal, the yes. ultrasound bat signal, because bats produce ultrasounds. I love it. I love it. I've, I've been actually uh, um, showing that off for quite some time. Um, one last question for you. So obviously you've uh, been very important to like this build up, which will be the merge. Um, you know, you, you all have been doing research for years and all of the sort of thankless work that gets us to Ethereum 2.0. Um, with Ethereum 2.0, when will we know that the merge is going to happen? Like. What ultimately confirms that it will? Maybe even like just at a high level, like how how is that ultimately decided? Like it will happen. There's no reason for us to continue testing. Uh, it's time for us to actually do the thing. 
Right. So it will definitely happen in the sense that there's overwhelming social consensus that we want this. Right. And it was planted as part of the vision even before Ethereum launched seven years ago, before the Genesis block. Now, to answer your question as to when will it be kind of locked in, um, it will be basically once we have very high confidence in the quality of the clients, the quality of the software. And we're at a point fairly late in the testing stage where we're going to be upgrading the big test nets like Gurley and Roxton and Sepolia. Um, and actually on June the 8th, we have the first big test net being upgraded, uh, Robston. Um, now, I'm relatively confident it will go smoothly and then maybe a few weeks later, we'll have the next test net and then a few weeks later, the, the one after that. And then we'll probably be in a position to say, hey, in a few weeks time, we want to merge. And the way that um, we do this is that we agree on what's called a total a TTD, terminal total difficulty, which is basically um, a threshold after which um, we have the first, the very first new proof of stake block and the very last proof of work block. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's just fascinating to me like that it's all finally coming together. And I will say, I, maybe I'm like the odd one, but like, I thought it wasn't coming for years. So it was such like, to me, it was such a pleasant surprise to find out that like the merge would happen this year. I mean, in 2022, because also too, I think it, it goes back to if like back in 2018, 2019, 2020, I, I got to, you know, at least learn from, from many of you working at the Ethereum Foundation and and on other teams uh, that we're doing research and just a very thankless sort of work that you do. So just congrats. It's, I know it's been like a very like long journey to this and, and really to like once the merge happens, I mean, that's just the start of something new. It's not like, it's not like the end of the road for research and all the uh, development and innovations that are going on. Yeah, in a way it's the very beginning because um, it's kind of the first version of proof of stake that we're putting out and we know that it's not perfect there's various attack vectors, there's various um, things that could be exploited. Uh, and we have a whole roadmap of incremental security upgrades, which will probably take, you know, half a decade, a decade, maybe more to fully pan out. Yeah, well, I I'm excited. And um, like I said, such a pleasure and a privilege to get to catch up with you. So thanks for your time. Thanks to you for having me.